Hey guys, Famous Criminals here. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumb up. Now there are a lot of YouTube videos talking about Ian Watkins and what he did for him to get away with what he was doing for so long. He must have had a lot of power and influence in his own country. And I thought it was interesting how Lost Profits was able to stay relevant in the UK for a little over a decade, even headlining over a band like Bring Me the Horizon. Their success didn't translate to the US. In fact, their albums would usually get bad to average reviews by American publications. Only one of their albums went gold in the US. Now let's start from the beginning and really analyze why they were never super relevant in the US. This is the lead singer, Ian Watkins. Ian did not have a rough upbringing. He was not from a poor area. He wasn't abused. He wasn't even bullied in school. Maybe he was just born evil. Now Lost Prophets released their first album in the year 2000. During this time, new metal and rap rock was really popular. Limp Bizkit, Papa Roach, Linkin Park. And just a reminder, the origins for new metal started in the US, specifically Southern California. Now this Lost Prophets, The Sound of Fake Progress, was an appropriation of new metal and it was very average. The image they tried to portray was similar to Linkin Park, spiked hair, dyed hair, earrings, a DJ. The band reminds me of Papa Roach, just not as good. American publications at the time rejected this album. All music said, Ian Watkins is guilty of reproducing Mike Patton's voice. Again, he emulated a sound that was already popular. The album did become popular in the UK, winning the Kerrang Award for Best British Newcomer, and the same magazine made a list of top 100 coolest people, and Ian Watkins was 67th. Now during their rise to fame, it was believed that Ian Watkins had something seriously wrong with him. This woman said that she was advised not to see or talk to him. Another woman who worked in the music industry saw Ian Watkins backstage. Members from an unnamed band stopped her and firmly told her, never talk to him, never be alone with him, stay away from him. After observing him, she noticed he was blatantly creepy and often targeted young girls for sexual activities. Now their second album, Start Something, came out in 2004. By this time, new metal was not as relevant as it used to be. It was more about alternative pop punk bands like Blink-182, Good Charlotte, sensitive type music. A lot of the songs on Start Something remind me of Good Charlotte but without the personality or charisma. That's what Lost Profits went for. All music described the album as a patent appropriation of the post-grunge most saleable proofs, Incubus, Hoobastank, and Linkin Park. The single, Last Train Home, sounds like an answer to Hoobastank's The Reason. A more positive review described the album as non-unique and unoriginal, but still enjoyable. This would be their only gold certified album in the US. They did a 12 city tour. Each venue had three to 500 people. They also opened for Hoobastank, and that makes sense. And what's really interesting is in the UK, they opened for Linkin Park and they were doing an arena tour. Are there any bands that you thought you'd been out on the road or even just played at a festival or something you just think, I never want to play with that band again? Any sort of... Millions. Tap root. They were the only band that's they ever just, been just, to us. The singer was just a cock. I remember when we were opening for them. Linkin Park? Yeah, the singer of Linkin Park is a fucking tool as You're well. You're not the first person I've heard say that. He's just the rest of the band are nice. The rest of the band like, are, are, made, are really, really cool, but that singer is a fucking tit. Right. You know what I mean? He's just an idiot. He's an idiot. Or does he just think he's got the, the rock star? Yeah, no, he is, yeah. Chester Bennington and Ian Watkins did not get along. The interviewer said it, you're the first person I've heard say something negative about Chester. People speculate it's because Chester was an activist against child predators and Ian was frequently having sex with teenagers on tour. Now, it was publicly known that he was in the girls as young as 13. Girls on forums saying, I wish I was younger so Ian would like me. And there's a few things. The UK has a more relaxed attitude about grown men banging teenagers. If a 21-year-old dates a 17-year-old in the US, it's seen as creepy. In the UK, 
that's seen as a run-of-the-mill common thing. In fact, the age of consent is not 18, but it's 16 in the UK. Another factor is, if you're a good-looking guy, you can get away with more. It's only creepy if you're ugly. Take guys like Chris Brown, the Boston Bomber, Ted Bundy. You could be a terrible person, but if you look good, people will forgive you. As far as his bandmates knowing what he was doing, I'm sure they knew just a little more than the public and I wouldn't scrutinize them too much, just like you shouldn't scrutinize people who worked below Harvey Weinstein because three of the members actually lived in California while Ian stayed in Wales. It wouldn't surprise me if they just toured and recorded music together but didn't hang out. I'm sure Ian kept his sociopathic baby fucking tendencies to himself. If you're committing serious crimes, I doubt you're gonna tell your coworkers. Okay, their third album. I've talked about how Lost Profits is unoriginal and usually they appropriate whatever is popular with a British flair. In 2006, emo was full swing. Bands like AFI, My Chemical Romance, everybody had emo haircuts. Even black emo started to appear. So you guessed it, they went full on emo in this album. All the band members had the Pete Wentz hair and everything. Now I think there's a meme, you look like the kids you used to bully. Lost Profits went from the meathead, will kick your ass image, to the soft emo image. It's like, who has an emo phase when they're in their 30s? Now I do get soulless vibes from Ian. If you watch his interviews, there is a dark energy about him. He seems like a guy who doesn't crack jokes, doesn't smile, just a difficult person. You could tell he's a dick. He tells the interviewer that he likes to people watch as a hobby, and the interviewer calls him creepy. That's why we're here, Alex. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I believe this, uh, this is Grand Central Terminal, is a, is a perfect location to people watch. Yeah, there's a lot of people here. What would you say to people who call this hobby creepy and weird? The usual people who, who call it creepy, mm -hmm. call it weird, are people who haven't actually had the pleasure mm -hmm. of uh, actually spending a day watching people. Turn uh, to your people gazing. Have fun. I will. Okay, uh, next up, this is Fallout Boy being told exactly how you should Plan a party. Careful there. This emo album featured rooftops. It sounds like a generic hodgepodge of what was popular back then. The music video features rebellious teenagers with emo haircuts. You don't understand me, Dad. I have an emo haircut. Sorry I disappointed you. Lost Profits really tapped into the souls of these teenagers, clearly their target audience. Now let me play part of the song so you could develop your own opinion. Now the music video for A Town Called Hypocrisy, there's lots of sexual innuendo involving children. Ian Watkins plays some sort of host for a kid's show. He starts off with, we taught the kids oral, then he pauses, hygiene. Ian seems really happy in this video, dancing with small children and half-naked women. With three successful albums in the UK, they were a part of British pop culture. So much that Ian appeared on a show, dressed up as Santa Claus, and had small children sit on his lap. Those poor children. What do you want for Christmas? PlayStation games. Do you want an Xbox 360? We can sort you out, yeah? I, know, I might know someone who knows someone, right? What else do you want? Are you lying? Cause this could be a really sick, mean thing. <laughs> so you're not actually going to get them that. This what? is mean. I might. I'm Santa. Hey, you maybe open it now. All right, then. Okay. Uh, I'll start this one. <laughs> Stop <laughs> smelling him. Why? Now, around this time, Ian, who was apparently a Christian, became an atheist. And he was a straight edge, and he started to take drugs. But I'm not talking about weed. I'm talking about crystal meth and cocaine. And religion is just created to keep people in line. Yeah. It doesn't actually exist. <laughs> not religion. Just... There is no God. Because of his drug habits, Ian became increasingly hard to work with. The band would often set up interventions for him, and shortly after recording their fourth album, their drummer decided to leave the band, later on saying that he rarely communicated with them, but it was usually friendly when he did. Speaking of their fourth album, Betrayed, Rick Rubin, who was a part of Columbia Records, didn't like Ian Watkins, and he didn't think their music was special. The album wasn't even released in the United States. There's no point in printing CDs, trying to distribute them to Best Buy, if only 400 people are going to buy it. 
Now, it would be interesting if somebody asked Rick Rubin what his argument with Ian Watkins was. Too bad Lost Profits was never relevant enough to get brought up in his interviews. Maybe if he got interviewed by some fucking British people. The thing about this album, I mentioned a negative review from the year 2000 saying that Ian Watkins does the most to emulate Mike Patton from Faith No More. Well, in 2009, members of Lost Profits said Faith No More was their main influence. Now, we know how Lost Prophets reinvents themselves every album to get with the times. They sort of did that again with an indie sound, and since they already had three successful albums and a fan base, Lost Prophets just took what worked in the past to please their longtime fans. One music video had them portrayed as an arena band that's been around for a while. Now this record would go gold in the UK, meaning that Lost Profits was able to keep a respectable amount of relevance for over a decade. And as we all know, bands, artists, come, go, they usually don't last that long. And Lost Profits was peaking. All of their 16-year-old emo fans were starting to grow up and grow out of the generic music they once thought was good. Their final album, Weapons, would come out in 2012. There was an EDM explosion during this time, and they definitely tried to incorporate this style to their music. Maybe a little Pierce the Veil, Black Veil Brides, Panic at the Disco, kind of like that type of music. Here's some reviews. Lost Profits still have a career. They've done well to sustain it. They've adapted to the changing times and they've gotten themselves an entire new fan base along the way. they still got their style, they just don't have any substance left. Another website says, as sad as it is to say, Weapons might be the final nail in the coffin for anybody holding out hope of Lost Profits ever being relevant again. The good news is the album was released in the US, charting at 145, so the album was a flop. Obviously, they still were able to tour and make money, and at this point, they have sold over 3 million records. The same year they released the album, they disbanded. Yeah, that's it. Nothing interesting to add. Okay, okay. I didn't know this band existed until I saw Ian Watkins on a most evil musicians list. I was really curious to see if their music was any good. I do separate art from the artist. I mean, I still listen to Wero 10K, even though he killed six people. Now, Ian Watkins was arrested in late 2012. Turns out he's a sick fucking piece of shit who sexually abused babies. In mid-2012, images on the message board 4chan showed images of Ian Watkins having sex with a baby. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't agree with people doing this type of thing this was his fans baby ian would tell this woman that he was going to teach the baby that its only purpose was to please him sexually in court today he was barely audible offering guilty pleas to a series of horrific sexual offenses including the attempted rape of a boy who was just 11 months old and in the dock beside him was the mother of that boy as well as the mother of a little girl both of whom pleaded guilty to helping the 36-year-old singer sexually assault their babies. They can't be named for legal reasons. This investigation has uncovered the most shocking and harrowing child abuse evidence I have ever seen. There is no doubt in my mind that Ian Watkins has exploited his celebrity status in order to abuse young children. The attempted rape happened at this London hotel last April. His mother, who's from Yorkshire, took him there for Watkins to abuse, and he filmed it. At the singer's home in Pontypridd, the police, with the help of GCHQ accessing his passwords, found more images of severe child abuse on his computers and phones, as well as a stream of highly distressing text exchanges between Watkins and the two women. The exchanges contain grotesque and often sadistic references about what they'd like to do to the children, including talk at one point of teaching one of the babies how to take drugs. Much of the detail is simply too horrific to report. He had two victims that were around the age of one, a baby boy and a baby girl. Ian would blow crystal meth smoke into the baby's face to try to get them hooked on drugs. The death penalty doesn't seem harsh all of a sudden. 
The police would search Ian's hard drive, and his password was I fuck kids. And shocker, there were thousands of images involving small children and animals. About 15 victims came forward, all under the age of 16. I wonder if Kerrang! magazine still thinks he's the 67th coolest person in the world. It rang hollow after the prosecution today relayed the contents of two phone calls he'd made from prison just days after pleading guilty. In one, he says to the woman he's called that he wants to put out a public statement. Just to say it was mega lols, I don't know what everyone is getting so freaked out about. Lols is often construed as meaning laugh out loud. Mega lols, a phrase used by his band while they were touring. When the woman suggested that she wasn't sure that this was the right statement, he replied, no, it's just lols now. He sat at the end of the dock, in silence, hair neatly styled, the suit three-piece. And along from him the two mothers, heads bowed, one sentenced to 14 years in prison, the other 17 years. They can't be named to protect their children's identities. It's not possible, said the judge, to assess what psychological harm those children will suffer from such a betrayal. Now there were actually five reports from five different people since 2009. The reports were ignored. Actually, one woman who he used to go out with reported them eight times with no luck. You would think he would get sentenced to life and he pleaded guilty to attempted rape and sexual assault, which was accepted by the prosecution. He further pled guilty to three counts of sexual assault involving children, six counts of taking, making, or possessing an extreme pornographic image involving a sex act on an animal. One of his victims, the baby boy, he told his mother, if you belong to me, so does your baby. After pleading guilty, he showed no remorse, even joking about what he did over the phone. Ian was sentenced to 29 years, and his two co-defendants, the mothers who gave Ian their babies, received 17 and 14 years in prison. Nobody has ever brought this up, but I wouldn't be surprised if he had more toddler victims that never came forward. How is he doing in jail? Well, in 2018, he was found with a mobile phone that he was using to contact a girlfriend outside of prison. Ian tried to say he was hiding the phone on behalf of two other inmates, and he was afraid to say who they were in fear of violent retribution. Because of this, they added 10 months to his sentence. The rest of the members of Lost Prophets, if I were them, I would have just replaced Ian with someone else and kept using the name. That'd probably be a good way to hurt Ian, knowing that his band moved moved on without him. They did this in a different way by starting a new band called No Devotion, deciding that it's better to start from scratch to separate themselves from this negative reputation Lost Profits had. No label wanted to get behind them anyway due to poor record sales and bad reputation. No Devotion had some success. They were almost funded by Martin Shkreli before he went to jail, but they never reached the mainstream success that Lost Profits had. Anyway, not to insert my personal opinion, but I hope Ian is having a terrible time in jail. Anyway, I'm out.